Emmerich of Horry County uh, and will get his title and his, uh, and his uh, duties and functions in just a moment. But just to say today we are going to go looking for a grave site. Again, you're listening to Horry County Community Digest. I'm your host and fellow Horry County and Herb Malsman. Welcome to Horry County Community Digest. Done info. Thanks for tuning in. Let's cut tape. We are back. Uh, we are back on uh, tape right now, and obviously, uh, let me make sure the clock is working here. We can we put the clock on? We have arrived where we're going to be. We're in the restaurant row, the restaurant row area. Uh, I'm looking out at Mega Fitness and looking around Rossi's restaurant, smoke free for how long now? I don't know. We are looking at a tree right now, uh, in restaurant off restaurant row right here. There's a Pacific right across the way, there always is, I guess. We are looking at a very impressive tree. And this is this is our spot today. This is where we're going to be investigating. We're waiting on right now Adam Emmerich and his partner. I believe he's Stevie, and I'm not certain of his last name. We'll get that in a moment. Uh, we're going to be uh, and they're getting out a GPR unit, a ground pre ground penetration radar unit, and we're going to go in search of a, a grave today. Um, and this is what we're doing. Uh, again, this tree is just, it's just remarkable. Uh, let's, uh, let's cut tape over here and uh, what a tree. We're going to get the, we can't get back around a tree. Uh, uh, Adam thought it was about, uh, about 400 years old. That's as much as we know. But come on out here and just, just see this tree. This is, uh, this is just remarkable. Let's cut tape and wait on Adam and Stevie. Here we go. Cut tape. We are uh, we are back on tape now, and we're with Adam Emmerich and Stevie Brown. Uh, Adam, we'll start with you. Right. What are we doing here today, and what are we likely to find and not likely to find? Why are we here, and and why would these folks be here? Well, there's a story that uh, has been handed down from generation to generation that um, Eliza Lonzia Boyd married her her sweetheart in the early 1800s, and he was he had a salt works near the ocean, near the swash here, um, near the Galleria. And uh, the story is that there was this magnificent tree that stood on the bluff overlooking kind of the salt works area. And it was her favorite area and favorite place to be rest restful. And she always said that when she died, she wanted to be buried under this tree. Um, we we are have to assume that this is the tree she was talking about because it is you know the most magnificent tree around here. Wow. <laughs> and, uh, the story is that she's buried under the tree with no marker. So we're we, the the tree and her gravesite is on the historic property register, the local historic property register. And when it was put on there, we did not have the technology to come out and try to find where she is. So hopefully today we'll be able to locate locate her grave. Okay. Let's get Stevie on for a moment. Stevie, are you are you in training yet? There we back to Eric in a little while. Are you in training here? Are you kind of what, what's your are you what? Why are we together today? Uh, yes, sir. I am in training today. I'm with uh, uh, come out with Adam today. We've uh, I work in the planning department with Adam, and uh, we're he works in long range planning, and I work in current planning, doing uh, plan review and everything. But we try to cross train in our departments and see what each other does, and and this is something very interesting to me. And I just wanted to come out and see what was going on myself. And what happens in uh, you said long range for Adam and your. Uh, current planning. Okay, so currently what's happening? Uh, well, not as much as we want to be happening right now. Uh, unfortunately, the development's down, but uh, we are seeing, I, I think, uh, a little bit more coming in, but that's probably that time of the year also. It's just time for it to start uh, getting a little busier and, and more plans coming in and uh, more development starting back up. Oh, so another is business, uh, uh, companies, business is opening. That's what yeah, hopefully. Yeah. Hopefully that's what that's what will be happening. Uh, right now, just a lot of developments that's uh, been setting and, and not having a lot done in them right now are, are coming back online and trying to get uh, final plats and stuff approved and, and hopefully start building some houses in them. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Adam, uh, thank you very much, Stevie. Good, good to meet you. Okay, Adam, um, if, if, if in fact, and what is her name again? Eliza Lonzia Boyd. And what happened to, did she marry? Or, in other words, that there are not... There, you don't suspect two people buried here, just one. We only we only have the story of one, although the uh, the suspicion clearly is if she's here, probably her husband is as well. Um, depending on other familial standings, it could be children here too. We don't we don't know honestly. The only report we has uh, have is of the one, so we'll see. Okay, now it's overcast today. Uh, what weather works best with this GPR? 
the weather itself isn't isn't so bad isn't such a factor as it is the the, the ground um, both the soil type and density and whether it's wet or not if the ground is wet it will not function well and uh, if there's a high level of clay in the soil it will not function well so you, you cut yourself an ant sand <laughs> sand is the best and this is pretty close to the beach so we should be just fine today you think so I hope so okay okay so we we're, we're, we're going what kind of a tree is this besides huge and beautiful and just gotcha bitey uh, it's a live oak and uh, uh, they, I'll defer to Stevie on any other details on it. It's, it is beautiful. Stevie, any other de details? Uh, uh, there's definitely a live oak tree and it's definitely very old. How old I would not be able to say, but it's definitely very old. You thought about 400 years ago? It, it, probably at least, yes sir. 400, what was happening 400 years ago in this very spot when this tree was planted? Not a lot. <laughs> you don't think, huh? Not really, no. This was pretty pristine and untouched at that point. So this, and, and kind of the exact opposite as it is now. You mean Rossi's wasn't here and smoke free? No, no, neither was the Kroger. <laughs> neither was the Kroger. No, Kroger. Okay, so we're, we're, we're moving up there. And uh, what are the pink, uh, what are the pink little flags? Flaglets? We, we use, the, the ant is gone, don't worry about it. Yeah. <laughs> we use those pink utility flags to mark, uh, mark what we think are graves as we, as we do this. And we've, we've marked hundreds of unmarked graves in the county through our cemetery project. Okay, so. I, I, you're, you're used to generally really cemeteries. This is, is sort of off the beaten path for you a little bit? This is a little more urban than most of the cemeteries we see and uh, it's kind of more, also more unique. This is one I've been, I've been really looking forward to doing, so hopefully we'll find some good results. If there is a, if, there, if and again her name is El Eliza Lonzia Boyd. El Eliza Lonzia, Lonzia Boyd. Lonzia okay. Boyd. If she is indeed buried here, what happens to this ground? Does it become hallowed? If, if she's here, it already is hallowed, um, whether we find her or not. Um, it, the ground is, is hallowed. Now, this, this particular section uh, is, is restricted on the deeds um, to be protected, to protect the tree. Uh, it, the tree is also on the historic property register, so hopefully, in theory, this, this area here will always always remain protected. So there, so this, 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 this can't be touched anyway. That's the theory. That's right. Well, they, they really, she really had to figure it out when she chose this spot, huh? <laughs> I think so, yes. <laughs> wow, well, talk about, talk about, uh, talk about uh, uh, vision, long-range planning. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> long-range planning, Bernie here. Okay, well, I'm just kind of, kind of, uh, you're listening to Horry County Community Digest. I'm your fellow, uh, your host and fellow Horry County and Herb Malsman. Uh, you've, you've already discussed where we are, um, and of course, you'll, you're hearing this on Horry County Community Digest.info. Thanks for tuning in. Uh, they're getting ready to, they're, they're just uh, considering and deciding what they're going to do. And Adam is, Adam is, uh, okay, it's begun. It's begun. The one, the one problem with this, this particular site is there's so much disturbance already to the ground. The activity in, in, in the soil here has already been disturbed so much that we may not be able to determine with any surety of what we're finding as a grave or a utility or just something that was dug up at a previous time and, and recovered. So we're going to have to do a little bit of investigation and see what we can find out. Okay, we're going to take a break and let Adam go to work. I'm, I'm, I'm certainly not going to be speaking to him as they, get, as they go, so I'm going to let him work. I'm going to take a little break, have a little coffee, and then, uh, and then we'll pick up uh, where, we, where we left off. Uh, let's cut tape. Here we go. Okay, we're back on. We've gone through about three quarters of the site so far. Adam, uh, we were talking off uh, off tape right now. I'm looking at a pink flag. We'll go into that in a second. Uh, you were talking about the uh, what you're finding so far. What what have you been finding? And again, you're about three quarters of the way through your through the project right now. What what have you found? And what is this flag? Uh, no. Well, we found one one aberration um, in this area so far. One one thing we're finding here is because the tree is so large, uh, we're finding a lot of root system. So it's, it's we have to try to differentiate between the root system and and something else. So uh, it's not it's not just so cut and dry as there's something different in the ground here. It could be a root. It could be development. It could be anything. But this one this one area here we're finding that is kind of standing out from the the different the root system and other things. So we're gonna we're gonna do a little more investigation on this one particular site and see what we can find. Um, and what we're looking for for the graves is we're looking for a certain depth. Um, the old axiom is people are buried six feet under. In Horry County you're not because the water table is so high and uh, the, if you put them six feet under you'd be putting them underwater. 
and people didn't dig that deep historically. They dug until they, they it wasn't feasible to dig any further and they put, they put the box in or the body in or the vault in. So you're looking at somewhere at the top of the grave being about two feet to three feet down and then the depth needed to, to put the, the body any further than that. So we're looking for aberrations at that depth. You're talking about throughout Horry County, it's a, it's a, 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 a Stevie's winning on you over there. You, you say throughout Horry County, uh, graves are not six feet deep generally? That's correct, that's correct. I, I, we found very few that are that deep in the county. So you won't have, if, if you're still breathing, you won't have that far to dig out, sorry. That's, that's right, that's right, it's a little safer for you. <laughs> wow, so no, is this, so graves, uh, graves are three feet, three to four feet deep, I guess, are three feet deep rather than six. That is correct, yes. So, there is, so really the casket is almost at the surface. In some places it is, and that's one of the problems we're finding too in a lot of cemeteries. Um, some of the older ones that were not as uh, well maintained or were not as uh, well planned, if they're close to the water table, we're finding some of the vaults actually raising out of the surface, and that becomes a big problem, especially if they're metal and they erode, then you then you have a problem with, with casket actually being obvious from the outside. You can see it from the from ground my, level. My daughter and I were in Paris in the June of 2000, and the, and, and also in 99, we were at Père Lachaise Cemetery. Do you know Père Lachaise? That's where Jim Morrison's buried? Oh, yeah, there you yeah, go, Jim Morrison. Yeah. yeah, have you been there? I have not, no. no. Yeah, we got to the gravesite, uh, Jim Morrison's gravesite. That's fantastic. Talk about, talk about, but you know, I get caught in that in that cemetery at night. When, if it closes, I mean, it's plenty spooky, uh, you know, uh, in the daytime. But at night, it must. Uh, holy cow! You don't want to get stuck there. Well, I think if you've been in as many cemeteries as I've been in, the the, the spooky factor might be gone. But uh, Pierre Lachaise is a whole different deal. <laughs> so Jim Morrison, she went there to see the bust of Jim Morrison, but it was taken away. Somebody stole it. That's, that's it. It was yeah. psychedelically painted and all that, and then somebody stole it. So she was pretty disappointed that, and people were leaving joints there and flowers at a pair of shoes because he got up and walked around. I mean, it's just a remarkable, remarkable, uh, you know, sightseeing buses showing up there. Well, one of the things that we're, we're doing with this project also is recording those things that are left behind as mementos. Now, we've not found anything quite that uh, unusual. Uh, the most, Cigarettes. And the I most mean, unusual the, thing we found, I think, has been a toothpick that's been glued to a stone. And apparently the, the person who's deceased was known for always having a toothpick in his mouth. That was one of the things that they wanted to, to remember him by. And matchbox cars and things like that, we're finding, uh, you know, some interesting interesting things like that, but nothing quite yeah. on level with uh, someone like Jim Morrison. The gravestone, it says uh, that uh, uh, against the devil inside of him, I think that's what the inscription is. That's pretty fitting. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah, pretty yeah. Fitting. Jim Morrison. Okay, so uh, Stevie has stopped there. Stevie, what do you, what do you see? What? I don't know. I'm going to have to refer to Adam if I do see anything at all. He's a lot uh, more familiar with reading this than I am. I was... That's a little deeper than any of the other things that we've seen right here, Adam. I didn't know. Let's fly, fly again and do some more investigation on it. it, it Their the ridge is kind of, it looks like a sort of a mountain range kind of thing happening there. And uh, you said it was deeper, meaning what? Well, it, depending on uh, the, the soil topography and everything, it depends on where, where they would have buried them, like I said. So they would have dug until it wasn't feasible to dig anymore. Um, some of the more the older historic graves, the ones from the early 1800s, are buried at a different different depth sometimes, yeah. um, and that you know for whatever reason, um, and especially when you're digging around a large tree with a large root system, they might have had to have dug deeper to, to get around that root system. So that that could be something, and it is because it's a disturbance deeper than usual. It's an aberration, and that's what really what we're looking for. So really, those are sound waves you're looking at there. Yeah, you're, you're kind of looking at sound wave, like radar, like a sonar. Sort of. It really is radar. Yeah. It's it sends, it sends millions of signals down every, it measures them so, there's so many of them, it measures them in nanoseconds. So they're coming back with, with huge amounts of data. And because you're getting so much data, you're able to extrapolate norms from that data. And what we filter out is those norms and we look for the differences. So we're not actually seeing skeletons or caskets right. or, or treasure. Uh, what we're seeing is differences in soil density. And that's what we're measuring. And, and from the difference in soil density, we we have to do a little bit of guess, guessing whether we're finding a grave, whether we're finding something else. So I cannot tell you for certain when we leave here today that what we found is a grave. The only way to do that would be to excavate, and we're not going to do that. But what I can tell you is that there's an aberration in an area consistent with where a grave has been reported, and therefore we're going to make the assumption that it might be a grave. And is there anything definitive on that uh, other beyond uh, probably or supposedly? Is there anything definitive that says this is a grave site? Or no? 
not without digging or, or probing and hitting a box. And that's the other way. Um, it's not really as accurate as what we're doing. And, and some people do grave dowsing yeah. with dowsing rod, dividing rods. I've, I've not seen it done, although I hear it's as, as accurate as what we do, although I'm not sure the science behind that. Well, that's with the stick, the, uh, yeah. the, the divining? That's right, that's right. Okay. Uh, yeah. <laughs> okay. okay, you're about to plant another. So this is the third this is the third pink flag that they are, they are, uh, they are planting, and this one, uh, kind of describing, uh, these, this, uh, these are two flags at looking north and south. I guess north and south. It's actually, east and west, which east, is, which is, is the right way. Yeah. Is looking east and west, and they're probably about three, maybe two and a half feet from each other. What does that tell you? Well, that means that the aberration here is at least, you know, three feet long. Um, if we find another one and about two more feet away, then we'll have something consistent with what a grave site would be shaped like. Uh, whereas the first pink flag we, we put uh, does not have any other aberrations around it, which means it's a single solitary aberration, making it less likely to be a grave. Um, well, so we look for the direction of the aberration, and this one is going east to west. Um, historically, based on religion, uh, people were buried with their head at the east, their feet at the west, so that when Jesus returns at, at resurrection, or at, at, uh, at, um, at the end of times, yeah. they'll raise up to face him. So we always, the graves usually are almost always situated with the head at the east and the foot at the west. So if it was facing north and south, it would be less likely to be a grave. But here, since it's maybe facing east and west, we might be finding something very consistent. And that's why people sleep east to west. <clears throat> there are people that sleep in that. I guess so. <laughs> Geogra geographical. <laughs> <laughs> and other religions, like like uh, in, in Judaism, they, they face towards Jerusalem, which also happens to be east-west here. So that makes it easy for us finding graves that are pretty consistently uh, facing that, that same direction. We're hoping to see another flag right around here. We'll see. We're going to, we're gonna, even if we don't, we'll come back and do a little bit more investigation, a little more in-depth and see what we can find. In-depth. No pun intended. Okay, yeah. here you go. Okay, you're listening to uh, Horry County Community Digest. I'm your host and fellow Horry County and Herb Malsman. We're with Stevie Brown and uh, and Anna Emmerich of, uh, of Horry County Planning. And uh, we're in search of Eliza. I'm not even going to get it. I'm going to write the name down so I can put it on the website, but I'm not going to try. But I'm pretty sure her name was Eliza. They're just passing the spot now with the three flags. They're just east of the two flags now. And they're discussing this situation. And they keep on going. So, so, so far, the two flags. Let's cut tape. Okay, Adam, uh, Adam has removed the flags now and is putting some orange tape uh, where the flags were. And that's what's happening. He's sticking them there now. And I'm just uh, looking under the tree over here. I see an ashtray. I wonder if she was a smoker. <laughs> and folks, I don't know, I guess people would just uh, came out here to smoke a cigarette or smoke some, whatever, and uh, they left the ashtray behind. Uh, don't, come on, guys, don't, don't do things like that, right? That's right. <laughs> yeah, you know what, don't be leaving us. Take your stuff. That's right. Uh, we, we do find a lot of litter all over the county, unfortunately, and uh, yeah, hopefully that's something we can rectify soon. Right. Okay, uh, now you just marked the orange tape. Uh, uh, why the marking? We're going to do, like I said, we're going to do a little more in-depth study at this particular site, and uh, we're going to, we're actually going to do a little 3D try on it and see if we can find any more um, dimension on it. And to do that, we need to run the machine over the site again, and the flags will actually impede the radar. So we're pulling the flags up and marking with something that won't be magnetic. And when are you going to be doing the 3D? In about five minutes here. Oh, yeah. good. Yeah. So we're going to be here for that. Absolutely. Okay, let's cut tape. Here we go. We're back with the doing right now. Uh, um, Adam has just laid out one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Uh, it, it looks like he's going about a, about a foot per flag. Uh, seven going east and west, and then heading north right now. I guess he's heading north right now, laying out flags. That's sort of yeah. They're going north. So uh, going east, west. One, two, three. One, two, three. There are six. Seven east west, and then one, two, three, four, five, six, six flags going north, north south, and now he's gonna he's laying out he's laying out a a, a box pattern or a, a grid a, a grid pattern right now. Okay, so then that's what they've done. So those are the flags right now, and uh, let's catch Adam real quick. What was that for? 
Uh, we're going to do a 3, 3D analysis on the, the site, so we'll be able to tell the shape of the, the aberration. Um, and the same in, machine? In the same machine, that's right. Oh, this is a, quite a machine. It really is. <laughs> it's not cheap either. Okay, not cheap. <laughs> let's cut tape. In fact, let's uh, leave this open and uh, hear what they're kind of eavesdrop here. <laughs> What's happening now? Uh, the problem with 3D is it's it's so precise it's not really meant for larger sections like we're doing. Um, typically it's used for finding rebar and concrete and construction projects. So if you want to drill for a plumbing or whatever, you want to make sure you're not going to hit anything metal, uh, you could do a very small section like, like inch by inch. We're going to do it foot by foot which makes it a little less precise and harder to, to get the uh, the uh, the layout going right and uh, yeah. is it too far is, is the person buried under here perhaps is she too far gone for a cadaver dog yes yes I would say so um, there there's probably not anything left of the cadaver it's simply uh, soil uh, changes right now so I don't think there'd be anything left to, to find in that way if you dug you may not even find anything but a difference in soil there so right. hopefully we'll find something this way. Ashes to ashes. And, 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 and here it's sand to sand, that's right. Sand to sand, yeah. yeah. Okay, uh, so there are... There. One, two, three, four, five, six. Six feet. Six feet. Six by 52 inches is what he's saying. So uh, let's cut the... Uh, I'm looking at the screen right now. It basically looks sort of like a lawnmower sort of thing, an electric lawnmower, uh, a power mo lawnmower with a screen, sort of like a little computer screen here at the handle. So as they're working with it, uh, they said they've got the handle, the and they're and they're moving along like a like a uh, a, a uh, lawnmower, and they're looking at its grid project GR002, and there are grids. It's it's a box with grids in it and uh, parameters and start canceling all that and antennae and um, 500 MH, MHZ shallow and that's what I'm looking at. It's not making any sense to me at all. But uh, yeah, <laughs> but folks, somebody out there, what are you, some? We have some techies out there, perhaps, who know what I'm talking about. Antenna 300 MH cap uh, low case Z. Uh, forward slash shallow. What does that mean, folks? Call that in. Okay, let's uh, let's. What do we, uh, Stevie? What's happening right now? Anything showing up that you can tell? I don't. I don't think he that he will know until he gets finished with, with what with what he's doing here. When he gets finished with the lines, then he can put it all together, and then maybe we'll possibly see something. Hopefully. Okay. So you can't tell right now. You're just doing this right now, and then you have to look it over. Put all the information together. Yes, sir. Okay, Herb, Herb. Herb, yes sir. Got, okay, yes sir. Okay, looks like Lance Armstrong before the troubles. Uh, yeah. Before it's always been troubles. Yeah. <laughs> Poor Lance. Okay, uh, let's cut tape. Okay, Adam is looking over what he's seen so far. Um, we're going to let him concentrate a little bit over here. Again, it's not so much sound waves. It looks like the soil may be, you know, the ridges beneath. Uh, to my untrained eye, I'm not seeing maybe something on the right there a little bit, no? I'm not seeing any really anything different here. I'm sorry I'm being quiet. I don't that, that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't found anything yet that I'm, I'm going to yellow a flag on yet, so. Nothing yet. I'm um, looking at, how do we describe the image we're looking at over there? Anyway? <laughs> what, what, what we're seeing is, um, it, we're seeing both the x-axis and the y-axis, and we're looking for what's called a parabola, or an upside down U, um, which basically because you're, you're pushing this, this machine um, across the plane, and it shoots down a cone of data, the, the closer you get to an aberration, you start to pick up a signal, but the signal is not intensified until you actually go over the aberration. So it makes that shape almost like a bell curve of, of the signal intensity. So that's... But right now it's like squiggly lines. Yeah, and, right now uh, it's all you see right now is squiggly lines. We're looking for something that jumps out of those squiggly lines at us as, uh, as the aberration. And you said an overturned U. That's right. Okay, so that's what I'm looking for here. And... 
and uh, I want to keep it open in case something all of a sudden it happens. <laughs> so we'll in wonderment over here. So I'm going to keep on chatting. We'll put you on hold. Strangers in the night. <laughs> Do something here. <laughs> well, let me see. We don't run commercials, so I can't do a commercial right now. Um, okay, we don't want to. We don't want to miss out on. Uh, sorry, folks, but, but I'm trying to keep. Uh, it's bad radio. Right? Yeah, I'm trying to keep. I'm trying to keep the air alive rather than dead. dead. There's nothing worse than dead air. But another, the, uh, an another pun here. So. Uh, <laughs> Dead air is not good, uh, you know, on radio. TV, I guess it works okay, but radio can't work. People go, what happened? <laughs> okay, and listen, uh, folks, while we're waiting over here, check out some of the check out some of the links that you'll find on this site. Some good stuff here. There's a, there's sort of like an upside down U. Yeah, uh, this, the aberration is 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 where we expected it to be, and and uh, it actually has some dimension, so that's that's good. So everything is kind of I, I I saw the difference right away. I could yeah, tell. That's it right there. So you've got you've got an upside down you not exactly you, you more like an upside down V perhaps or sure. well, not a V but V would be even more uh, than a U. Uh, it, yeah, it's almost like a smile up a frown. How about that? A frown. Yeah, a uh, smile upside down. There you go. Okay. And uh, folks, check out some of the links. There's some good stuff over here. As I understand, uh, the weather, the uh, uh, National Oceanographic uh, something or other was saying it's going to be a heavy weather season. Check out Storm Spotters on, online over here. Check the link. Okay, what are we looking at? Well, of all the sites, uh, the entire area here, this is the only site that I would say has has the consistency of a grave. Uh, it's certainly close enough to the proximity of the trunk that it could be a grave. Um, and and I, I actually would would I can't say that it's a grave. I say it's consistent with a grave. It's the shape of a grave. It's the size of a grave. It's the depth of a grave. And it's in a place where a grave has been reported. So I would I'm going to mark this tentatively as the grave site of Alonzo, Eliza Alonzia Boyd. How long did it take for you to pick up on that name and get it down? Uh, we have to write it three or four times to get it. And so it, you know how to write it out? Yes, I do. <laughs> You're gonna have to write it out for me on the way out so I can put it on the site. We actually have a plaque in my office that will go out here at some point to commemorate both the tree and the grave. Uh, when will that happen? Well, I, I'd hope to bring it with me today, but it's actually at the museum and I have to find it. So we, we used it in an exhibit uh, in the fall and, and it'll come back out here hopefully soon. Okay, uh, so that's what's happening over here. We, you believe you, you. How, how certain are you that you found the grave? <clears throat> In percentage, seventy. Well, that's pretty yeah, good. Uh, of, of this site, this is the only spot that is consistent with a grave. So, if, if I were to, if I were told that there was definitely a grave here, I would say that percentage would be higher. So if I was anywhere else in the county and, and I was finding an aberration and, and this was the aberration I found, I would give you a very low percentage. But because we know there's historical record that there's probably a grave here um, and we found something consistent with a grave, I'd say that this is this is probably the gravesite of, of Eliza Lonzi Boyd. Right. You said that's going to be going on uh, sites pretty soon. Give us a website. I don't have a website address for you yet. Internally, we're still um, reviewing and testing the, the Cemetery Project website. But what we hope that will allow anyone to do from anywhere in the country in the world is to do genealogical research on on ancestors graves buried here in Horry County um, you can type in the name of anyone any ancestor it'll pull up everyone with that last name or that name it'll show you exactly on the map where they're buried and have the condition of their grave it'll have all the details of their grave including the birth date the death date the epitaph symbols anything left behind as mementos and also it'll have a photograph of the grave so you won't need to visit your your family's graves here in Horry County if you live in Alaska you'll be able to see it all on the internet okay and and that's not we up soon, you think? Hopefully in the next couple months. Can they can they reach you through orycounty.org? Uh, yes, absolutely. Um, orycounty.org through the planning department link. Um, if you get to the planning department, you can find me that way. Um, also through the Board of Architectural Review and Historic Preservation, which I am the staff liaison for. Okay. And that link, orycounty.org, can be found at the site. Just look for orycounty.org. And you can also catch the council meetings there, Horry County Council. So that's a that's a link you want to check out, and you'll come to you'll come to Adam Emmerich's uh, field of expertise. Very good, thank you. Okay, okay we're not finished yet. All I'm right. going to let you keep on going. And uh, Eliza, Eliza Lonzia Boyd. Lonzia, Lonzia Boyd. That's right. That's okay. right. Cut <laughs> tape. Okay, let's do a quick goodbye to Adam. Adam, thank you very much. No problem. Thank you for having me. This is a great opportunity to kind of spread the word about the stuff we're doing here at the county. Okay, uh, Stevie, thank you. Thank you very much. We've had a uh, nice time today, and I appreciate it. Thank you.
other familial standings. It could be children here too. We don't we don't know. Honestly, the only report we has uh, have is of the one. So we'll see. Okay. Now it's overcast today. Uh, what weather works best with this GPR? The weather itself isn't isn't so bad isn't such a factor as it is the the, the ground um, both the soil type and density and whether it's wet or not. If the ground is wet, it will not function well, and uh, if there's a high level of clay in the soil, it will not function well. So you, you cook yourself an ant. The sand <laughs> sand is the best, and this is pretty close to the beach, so we should be just fine today. You think so? I hope so. Okay, okay. So we're, we're, we're going, what kind of a tree is this besides huge and beautiful and just gosh almighty? Uh, it's a live oak and. Uh, uh, I, I'll defer to Stevie on any other details on it. It's, it is beautiful. Stevie, any other de details? Uh, uh, there's definitely a live oak tree and it's definitely very old. How old I would not be able to say, but it's definitely very old. You thought about 400 years ago? It, it, probably at least, yes sir. Funny, what was happening 400 years ago in this very spot when this tree was planted? Not okay. a lot. <laughs> you don't think, huh? Not really, no. This was pretty pristine and untouched at that point. Of Horry County, uh, and we'll get his title and his uh, and his uh, duties and functions in just a moment. But just to say, today we are going to go looking for a grave site. Again, you're listening to Horry County Community Digest. I'm your host and fellow Horry County and Herb Malsman. Welcome to Horry County Community Digest. Done info. Thanks for tuning in. Let's cut tape. We are back. Uh, we are back on uh, tape right now, and obviously, uh, let me make sure the clock is working here. Can okay, we put the clock on? We have arrived where we're going to be. We're in the restaurant row, the restaurant row area. Uh, I'm looking out at Mega Fitness and looking around Rossi's restaurant, smoke free for how long now? I don't know. We are looking at a tree right now, uh, in restaurant off restaurant row right here. There's a Pacific right across the way, the rose is, I guess. We are looking at a very impressive tree. And this is this is our spot today. This is where we're going to be investigating. We're waiting on right now Adam Emmerich and his partner. I believe he's Stevie, and I'm not certain of his last name. We'll get that in a moment. Uh, we're going to be uh, and they're getting out a GPR unit, a ground pre ground penetration radar unit, and we're going to go in search of a, uh, a grave today. Um, and this is what we're doing. Uh, again, this tree is just, it's just remarkable. Uh, let's, uh, let's cut tape over here and uh, what a tree. We're going to get, the, we can't get back around a tree. Uh, uh, Adam thought it was about, uh, about 400 years old. That's as much as we know. But come on out here and just, just see this tree. This is, uh, this is just remarkable. Let's cut tape and wait on Adam and Stevie. Here we go. Cut tape. We are uh, we are back on tape now, and we're with Adam Emmerich and Stevie Brown. Uh, Adam, we'll start with you. Right. What are we doing here today, and what are we likely to find and not likely to find? Why are we here, and and why would these folks be here? Well, there's a story that uh, has been handed down from generation to generation that um, Eliza Lonzia Boyd married her her sweetheart in the early 1800s, and he was he had a salt works near the ocean, near the swash here, um, near the gallery. What happens in, uh, you said long range for Adam and your? Uh, current planning. Okay, so currently what's happening? Uh, well, not as much as we want to be happening right now. Uh, unfortunately, the development's down, but uh, we are seeing, I, I think, uh, a little bit more coming in, but that's probably that time of the year also. It's just time for it to start uh, getting a little busier and, and more plans coming in and uh, more development starting back up. Oh, so I know there's business, uh, uh, companies, businesses opening. That's what yeah, hopefully. Yeah. Hopefully that's what that's what will be happening. Uh, right now, just a lot of developments that's uh, been sitting and, and not having a lot done in them right now are, are coming back online and trying to get uh, final plants and stuff approved and, and hopefully start building some houses in them. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Adam, uh, thank you very much, Stevie. Good, good to meet you. Okay, Adam, um, if, if, if in fact, and what is her name again? Eliza Lonzia Boyd. And what happened to her? Did she marry? Or, in other words, that there are not... There, you don't suspect two people buried here, just one. We only we only have the story of one, although this, the, uh, the suspicion clearly is if she's here, probably her husband is as well, um, depending on. Yeah. And uh, the story is that there was this magnificent tree 
that stood on the bluff overlooking kind of the salt works area and it was her favorite area and favorite place to be rest restful and she always said that when she died she wanted to be buried under this tree um, we we are have to assume that this is the tree she was talking about because it is you know the most magnificent tree around here wow. <laughs> and uh, the story is that she's buried under the tree with no marker so we're we the the tree and her gravesite is on the historic property register the local historic property register and when it was put on there we did not have the technology to come out and try to find where she is so hopefully today we'll be able to locate locate her grave okay. let's get stevie on for a moment stevie are you are you in trading it there we're back to eric in a little while are you in trading here are you kind of what what's your are you what why are we together today? Uh, yes, sir. I am in training today. I'm with, uh, uh, come out with Adam today. We've, uh, I work in the planning department with Adam, and uh, we're, he works in long range planning, and I work in current planning, doing uh, plan review and everything, but we try to cross train in all departments and see what each other does, and, and this is something very interesting to me, and I just wanted to come out and see what was going on myself. And 